Hey guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your professor, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through 11.5, putting it all together, genetic code and protein synthesis. Now, the whole point of this is protein synthesis. DNA, messenger RNA, to, transfer R to transcription RNA, tRNA, is all about making the right protein. Now, mRNA is transcribed from DNA, and the sequence will specify the protein that's to be made, okay? The sequence of DNA will make a certain sequence of mRNA, which will translate into a certain protein sequence, uh, pro protein primary structure, if you will, okay? Now, a given RNA triplet called a codon, we learned this before, a codon translates to a specific amino acid, okay? The genetic code shows the codons of mRNA for 20 different amino acids. So, but there are actually 64 possible codon combinations, so there's plenty of room here. There's only 20 amino acids, and there's 64 codons. So, there's um, some redundancy inside of the system as well, which is okay. Now, there are special codons. UGA, UAA, and UAG are what are called stop codons. So they tell the um, process to terminate, stop building the protein here, and then have this as my primary structure type of things. Now, uh, for example, if I had a codon UUU, that translates into phenylalanine. If I have GGG, that transfers or translates into glycine. If I have uh, CGC, that's an arginine arginine, pardon me, translation. So the codon, or the three base pairs inside of, uh, as a part of a messenger RNA, those base pairs will translate using tRNA to a specific amino acid, to a specific amino acid. So let's go through it a uh, little bit here. Here's the process. DNA will unwind at a certain site of a gene. Now remember, a gene is simply a portion of DNA that encodes for a protein. It's a portion of a DNA that encodes for a protein. Now, the complementary messenger RNA is created by RNA polymerase. You've already learned this. Nothing new here. The mRNA will travel to the ribosome, which are outside of the nucleus. So they'll travel outside the nucleus. Find a ribosome and interact with it. Okay? Now, tRNA activation. Before tRNA can be used in the ribosome, an amino acid must be attached to it. Okay? tRNA synthase attaches the correct amino acid to the acceptor stem. So you have a tRNA with no amino acid on it. Out there in the cell, a tRNA molecule will be bonded to an amino acid using an enzyme known as tRNA synthase. Synthetase, excuse me. Okay? Now, at this point, the tRNA, which is loaded with an amino acid, is ready for protein synthesis. All right? So, messenger RNA gets built inside the nucleus, transfers itself outside the nucleus, and finds a ribosome to interact with. At this point, or at some point, tRNA is activated by an enzyme called tRNA synthetase. Synthetase. It attaches an amino acid to the tRNA at what is known as the acceptor stem. So far, so good. So now we have our tRNA is ready, our mRNA is ready. They're ready for protein synthesis. At this point, translation will occur. mRNA positions itself in the ribosome in a certain way showing its codon. Now, the, there's a special codon called the start codon. It's going to start the process. And that happens to be AUG, adenosine uracil guanosine. Now, the activated tRNA with its anti-codon, and it also has a methionine attached, but that's not a big deal. Its anti-codon will bond through hydrogen bonding. It'll use hydrogen bonding to interact with mRNA. At that point, once that's occurred, a second tRNA enters the ribosome. 
So we have one uh, tRNA, and now another one has come into close proximity. They're beside each other, essentially. Okay? Remember, there's amino acids on them. So now they're in close proximity. The two amino acids are bonded together, forming the peptide bond. And that's because of the interaction between tRNA and mRNA. The deactivated tRNA leaves the ribosome. So once you've donated your amino acid to someone, you leave. You just diffuse back out into the cell. And it's the second RNA shifts to the first position. So you have one RNA here, one here. This RNA here is done. It's lost its amino acid. So it's like, see you later. And this one shifts over one position, leaving this spot right here where the tRNA was empty for a new tRNA to come in. All right? The shifting is known as translocation. Now, termination. Eventually, the ribosome will encounter what's called the stop codon, or the codon that tells the ribosome, no more amino acids. We're done. Okay? And that's when the protein synthesis ends and the polypeptide chain is released from the ribosome. Now, the growing polypeptide folds into its tertiary structure, forming any disulfide link, salt bridges, and other interactions that make the, part, the, poly, excuse me, the protein biologically active. Okay? But this is all because DNA sent mRNA out to the ribosome. That's what it happens. Now, Guys, this is complicated stuff. We're going to make it as easy as, whoops, we're going to make it as easy as we can. So let's look at the schematic, okay? We're going to go through the whole process again. Inside of the nucleus, in here, we have DNA unwinding. A gene of DNA, which is just a sequence of nucleotides, is unwinding a little bit. RNA polymerase, working with nucleotides, builds messenger RNA as, as a complementary base pairing strand from DNA. That messenger RNA goes out into the cell. So mRNA dumps out into the cell. At this point, mRNA will find itself connected to a small subunit of a ribosome. They're interacting with the base pairs facing out. Okay? So far, so good. So the, the DNA has made mRNA, which has left the cell, the, sorry, the nucleus, pardon me, and gone and found itself a small subunit of a ribosome. Oops, sorry guys. Also in the cell, tRNA is finding amino acids to bind with. There's an enzyme that's attaching an amino acid to the tRNA's uh, stem, and it's now ready for protein synthesis. So now, at this point, the tRNA must find itself inside of the ribosome. Inside of the ribosome. The codon on the mRNA is ready to be hydrogen bonding to the anticodon of tRNA. It's ready to be bonded or hydrogen bonding to the tRNA. The tRNA is called the anticodon. The mRNA is called the codon. Okay, now these codon anticodon pairs will interact. And notice how it's very specific. You have, you have a GCC, so it has to be CGG on top. That's the anticodon. That anticodon is bringing a very specific amino acid with it. Okay, now a second tRNA will come in beside it on the next codon over. So we have one codon here. We have another codon right here. Okay? So now there's two tRNA beside each other. Notice how we have a growing polypeptide chain here. This, this, this uh, ribosome has been working for a little while. Now we have this amino acid that the an enzyme is going to attach to that amino acid because they're in close proximity. They're going to slam together to make a peptide bond. All right, and that's what's going on. Messenger RNA is built in the nucleus from DNA, finds its way into the cell, into the outside the nucleus, finds a small subunit of a ribosome, binds to the ribosome, 
Now it's ready for protein synthesis. The tRNA will bind will bond to a amino acid somewhere, and it will find the complementary pair or uh, sorry trio on mRNA and bind to it, and that's going to put specific amino acids beside each other in the chain. And this is what's going on. Okay, at that point the uh, amino acids will bond to each other, making a polypeptide. And that polypeptide will go on and be further modified later on to make a fully developed protein or enzyme. All right? And this is what's happening. Now, I get it. It's very complicated. But once you let yourself learn it, it's actually not as bad as you think. Okay? It's all about hydrogen bonding. Who's going to hydrogen bond with who? Okay? tRNA, the anticodon, will bond, hydrogen bond, very specifically to a codon of mRNA. And that's how you're going to get different amino acids in the primary sequence, which is, quite frankly, fascinating and challenging to understand. So take your time and learn it, but don't take too much time because your exam is coming up. Okay? So now, with that, I want to wish you guys good luck and good chemistry.